Arsenal have signed Urien Timber from Ajax for roughly 40 million euros, meaning they have now added a young international centre-back to their squad. But they already have quite a few of those. In fact, Arsenal have quite a good back four already. And they already have players like Rob Holding and Tommy Yasu as depth. So why are they spending so much money on a squad player? Well, I believe I have the answers and I'm going to tell them to you now. But first, let me tell you who the hell this guy is. So Jurian Timber is a 22-year-old Dutch international defender who used to play for Ajax. He's played in the Champions League for them and he was very good. And he's also won the league twice when Eric ten Hag was manager there. And you may remember him playing in the World Cup for the Netherlands um, in that one that happened in Christmas. But you could also not remember that because no one remembers that there was a World Cup at Christmas like seven months ago. The World Cup was seven months ago. But this is what Jurian Timber plays like. And the thing to notice about these statistics is that Jurian Timber is ace. He's really really good but particularly focus on this part these are progressive passes and progressive carries these are the bits that are relevant to what we're going to talk about with Timber and how he fits into Arsenal because Timber likes to bring the ball out of defense that's what he likes to do now that's quite useful in some situations but Mikel Arteta has said in the past he doesn't actually like it when his players dribble from the back he wants them to pass because it allows you to play a positional game to get back in your positions if you dribble it makes a bit of difference into how your team is structured but what isn't measured in the statistics is his decision making which is absolutely key at the top level and he's very good at this. So what you'll often find with him in build-up, say he's starting here in the right centre-back position, is he won't rush like long passes into someone forward that might make them lose the ball if someone steps in and wins it. Instead, he often plays a more pragmatic, safer pass. Goes here, then the ball goes wide, and then maybe it goes back to him and they work it. So then they can work themselves into their correct position and structure to be able to build the ball properly. And often, because he often plays in like a back three, maybe like this, you might see the same sort of thing. He'll be in this side of the pitch, get rid of these lines, and then what you'll see him do is rather than trying to force it down the line like this, is he will instead look for the short pass. Maybe this one in here is too risky, so he won't play that. Instead, he'll go backwards, because then it allows the team they're playing against to shift across, and then these players can get back into their right positions so they can build safely. But equally, if there is space in behind, he is not scared at all to knock one long in behind. So if he's got the ball here, say, and he can spot the high line of the opposition, what he might do is then ping a long ball over the top. He's quite good at it. He's not amazing with his accuracy, but he spots the space, Ball goes over the top, someone runs into it, you might get a chance on goal that way, and it gets you forward anyway. So if you're doing this, you can then counter press, move up the pitch, that kind of helps. But he's also very good in the final third. He's just a very, very talented player. So say we push all these, these players back like this, you'll often find him running into this right half space where he can make things happen. For example, here. Here he is on the ball in the final third for Ajax, you see? The team's all laid out and what he spotted is this player making a run. High level vision, this is really useful from a creative player, let alone a defender. He stepped into midfield for an overload. The player's making a run, he spots it, makes the pass through, they get in behind here, this ball goes across and Ajax scores. So you've got a player that can get in the final third and make good decisions. So he's good on the ball, he makes good decisions on the ball, that's important. Now off the ball, he's uh, very he's quick so he can help catch up with players running in behind, that's useful. He's strong, he's not massive, he's not gonna make you bounce off him, but he's not great in the air. And what isn't featured in these stats here is his aerial duels one. It puts him in the 12th percentile, i.e. he's not very good at winning the ball in the air. He's not a monster who's going to be able to smash players out of the way. And he also really likes to go into slide tackles. He goes on the ground quite often, sliding the tackles in the middle of the pitch. And well, that's quite fun to watch and it wins the ball. Sometimes I can see it resulting in a classic Arsenal red card in the 28th minute when they're 1-0 up, which makes them draw or lose the game and therefore the title. <laughs> so maybe, maybe Mikel Arteta will try and coach that out of him. I don't know. It's quite a good thing sometimes, maybe a bad thing at others. That's for where he'll play, where well, there's a lot of different options because with most Ajax Academy players, they can play a heap of different positions. And Timber could go in the right centre back, he can play at right back, he can play a defensive midfield, he can play all the same sort of positions in one game. He might start in the right centre back, move over to the wide areas, he can overlap, he can underlap, he can play pretty much anywhere. But this is really important for where he's going to play for Arsenal because where does he fit in? Where does he start? And this is the thing, because it might actually change Arsenal tactically, Arteta has options. If we look at the depth they've got, we can see Tierney and Zinchenko, two different versions of the same position. Kievor is very much Gabriel's backup, but hasn't really been relied on, especially after not performing hugely well in the Europa League in the, in the game against um, Sporting. Holding can kind of cover both these positions, isn't fantastic at it. Tommy Yasu can play as a right or a left or a centre back. I put him probably as a right side to back up white. So the lack of depth appears to be on William Saliba, who is absolutely key for Arsenal. And of course, you've got Timber here. But then you can't sign a player for 40 million euros or something and not really give him a starting place. But here's a few things to think about. So first of all, competition for places is key. It raises a level ever and above you. You've got a bit of depth. That's very useful. But secondly, and far more important to me, 
is that you cannot expect every single player to play 38 league games and then also play Champions League and then cup games and other cup games and everything else going on. It's unrealistic. And if you look at who manages their squad very well, well, I would point towards Manchester City because if you look at who played last season for them in their defence, no defender play or no defender started more than 24 games. That was Manuel Kanji. And you go through the list of their centre backs. What you had was John Stone started uh, 21, Kyle Walker's 22, he's a right back as well. Ruben Diaz 22, and Laporte 11. These are how many starts they've had. They've also had Rico Lewis and Lewis uh, Joe Cancelo. Uh, playing there, even Bernardo played at left back for one game. But basically, City keep their players happy by all of them sharing the responsibility of the team. That means they get fewer injuries, that means they're all match fit all the time, and they can rotate and have different options at the back, which affects everything going forward, which we'll come to in a minute. And then we go to Arsenal's injury list last season. We know they dropped off, especially when William Saliba got injured. That was the big drop off for them last season, but they had loads of other injuries over the course of the time. So Gabriel missed 15 games last season. He's one of them. Saliba missed 12 games towards the end of the season, obviously when they really started to drop off after the World Cup. Kiev was his backup. He's kind of learning the ropes. Ben White, um, not really challenged by Tommy Asu. He was okay. He played almost every single game last season for Arsenal. Started getting substituted during a lot of them, maybe getting tired towards the end of the season. Then what you have is Rob holding his backup, maybe not the most reliable. Tommy Asu, who's meant to be the depth player, he missed 11 games last season. He'll be out until September as well because he had knee surgery. But the real issue is Zinchenko because he missed 17 games last season. They think how important he is in this left position coming inside to be the inverted midfielder. If they miss him, they don't really have an option to cover up. And this is a problem Arsenal have because if you're expecting all these players to start every single week, maybe you get the benefit of uh, squad, you know, team cohesion because they're playing all week together. But over time you build up injuries and that's no good, especially if you're playing on like a Saturday afternoon and then you're playing on a Tuesday night away somewhere random in Europe. Then you come on back, you've got a game on Saturday morning, then you've got a game on Wednesday away somewhere in Europe again. And these games will build up because as you change your training schedule, if you've got a game in Europe that you're going to play your first team squad, not your Europa League squad, you're playing your first team for that, suddenly you lose training days after replace them with recovery, travel and rest days. So you have less time to train, less time to recover even, and therefore you might even pick up even more injuries, which is obviously <laughs> But here's the tactical thing and where it all matters as to where Timber will play and what Arsenal can do now. Because we know how it worked before, we know it looked like this uh, from the back, and when they go forward it ends up looking something a bit like this with Havertz now of course playing as one of the two tens. Because Zinchenko comes from his left spot into the midfield, either Ben White alongside him in a three like this, and then you know you get Ben White can overlap as well, so Saka can come inside like this. This is kind of your option, that's what you sometimes get. Lots of overloads, different times, it's all about timing, doesn't always do this. He does it at the right times, but Sinchenko very key here. So in the past they might have played Tomiyasu as a backup in this sort of position, but obviously he's been injured quite a lot. And also he's not as good at playing in midfield, he's just not as well suited to that as certain others. So maybe a player like Granit Xhaka who might leave, he hasn't gone yet, he could come in here and then play at left back, which is obviously not ideal, it's not really what you want, and he might be gone. But what if, bear with me, they do have injury problems, you've got this real issue here and you're playing all these games back to back, and Zinchenko is injured, you can't play him. And you don't want to play Tommy Asu here because it doesn't give you the same sort of progressive passing from these positions that you want. And he kind of sits a bit deeper, or maybe you want him to be the right-sided centre-back because White is injured, or something like that. Well, what you can do is play one of your most valuable assets who's sat on the bench and he's amazing at other stuff. And that guy, of course, is our friend, Kieran Tierney. Now, Kieran Tierney is a different kind of left-back to Zinchenko. He can also play as a left centre-back, so it gives you the option of making a back three, and then maybe moving this in here as an inverted right side like this. That gives you the option here, done that for Scotland quite a lot. But what you get with Tierney mostly is he likes to overlap. So if you play a back four that looks a bit more like this, you have Party in here, and Havertz, and Nodegar, and Jesus here, right? So what you get then is Jesus is obviously the guy who drops in a little deeper. Havertz can play in behind the second striker. Odegaard might drop a bit deeper. Saka can go wide. Martinelli can come inside and attack this left half space. So you've got all these attacking options around this bit of the pitch. Tierney overlaps, then you cover them this way. And you've got Ben White even here and Party, and the same sort of thing. Maybe these guys pull across and Ben White comes inside and you get your two here. Maybe um, Odegaard drops into being a three like this. You've got someone a bit deeper. You've got lots of options with Tierney here. So where does Timber fit into it? Well. I think what you probably have, as well as cover for Ben White and Saliba, what you have is you put in Timber into this position here, and you get a different kind of player in this position. So you can choose to play Ben White, who can progress the ball through passing, or you can do it with Timber, who can take the ball and dribble past people. He's really good at playing in this sort of pivot role. So you can give him the ball here, he might skip past the challenge, and that opens up more opportunities for you to thread a ball through, like the example we showed earlier, a different kind of player in this position. It also means that you can have a right, uh, right side of 
centre back like this. He's very suited to play in this position, done it for Ajax for ages, which again frees up Tierney to do more of this wing play because you've got more of the pitch covered. It's all about pivoting. You can play with a back three like this. You can go to a back four because he can do that too. You've got loads of options and if you go to a back four and push Tierney round as the three-sided centre-backs, then Timber can overlap, Saka can come in, and you don't lose anything in terms of carrying the ball because he's much better at carrying it than Ben White. Let me show you the proof. Here's Urien Timbers, passes and carries, the carries being the important part, and this is Ben White's carries. Different kind of player, obviously, that's skewed because different league, different positions and things like that, but Ben White is not going to be able to go past people. He's not maybe as good in that kind of pivot role. He's good at playing as the third centre-back and then going wide on the overlap and doing things that way. Whereas what you get with Timber is far more on the ball. That's what you get. A different kind of player to Ben White. But the most important part is the depth for me. You have a high level player now. So you've got Timber who can play as part of the right side of centre-back here when you don't want to play Ben White there. Ben White's injured, you want to give him a rest. You don't have to worry about the quality dropping down. If Gabriel's not playing very well, you could play Kievor, but you didn't have a great time last season. Perhaps Kievor is not being trusted just yet. So Gabriel comes out, in comes Timber, in comes Ben White. Your level doesn't drop. It's really important to have these options now. Tierney can go on the outside, or you then play Zinchenko, and then what you get is again, the same sort of thing as ever. Zinchenko, Party and White in this three with Saliba and Timber. They're gonna have loads of options now, so Arsenal should be stronger throughout the entire season, which is the whole problem they had last season. Timber gives you that flexibility, and also he can then move into midfield and do things in that position when they do have an advantage and are pushing teams right back. And one last thing, perhaps, if Arsenal do complete the signing of Declan Rice, what you then have is the options to change something even further. And we know that everyone knows how Arsenal play now. They like playing with the box midfield. That's what Havertz is coming in to do. But what if you did, for example, you played Saliba, Timber, and then you had, let's say, we put Gabriel in here, and then you have Tommy Asu, the only one available. So you've got these four players who can play as centre-backs. Or maybe Gabriel's injured and you only have Declan Rice here. So you put Rice in here, and then you have Jorginho playing. Then what you get is the ability to do something different, like, say, perhaps Rice moves into midfield like John Stones has, and what you suddenly get is the back three with these two in here, just like what Man City are doing. It's just another way to develop things tactically. It gives Mikel Arteta options. He's got different players with different attributes who can play different positions. Positions. You can do all different things to start the game, you can change it mid-game, they can change it mid-sequence of attack. It's just going to make Arsenal a much, much better team, as in a better squad, which makes for a better team. And that's why Arsenal have signed Urien Timber and why he'll probably be great for them. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.